What's up guys? Mel here from Southside Boy Style. Here today with another video. And you know, for me, the problems just keep coming in and coming in and coming in. You see me working on exhaust. You see me working on starters. You see me working on stereos. You see me working on brakes and wheel bearings. And it just keeps going and going and going. Today is no different. No different today. And today, guys, it's a little bit of a bigger one. So let me open up this bag of goodies. So what we have here, guys, is a high-pressure power steering line. I've been noticing in the, uh, in the blue, blue slash black charcoal. I don't know what color it is, guys. I think it's like a blue charcoal, charcoal, blue, blue, blacky, blue, blue, yellow. No, not yellow. It's black or charcoal or blue. I don't know. It's up to you. But anyway, guys, I've been noticing in that particular caravan, Dodge Caravan, that this line has been bad, okay? It's been bad, it's been leaking. And where it's leaking to is an actual kind of common place. It's leaking in the join right here underneath the van, which I will show you when I get up underneath of it, okay? So this little line, um, the cheapest I could get for it for the 2012 Dodge Caravan was 80 bucks, okay? 80, 90 bucks. So that's not bad. Sometimes they range like 160 or a little over 200 because it's a high pressure power steering line hose. So I'm gonna show you guys where it's leaking. It's a common problem with these vans. Most of the time, on Fortunately, it's always the high pressure line. It's not in the return line. If it was a return line, it's really cheap, but the high pressure line is a bit more expensive. But normally this is the line that uh, causes all the problems in the Dodge Caravan. So we're gonna take the old one out today and we're gonna install the new one. Now, this is not our red taxi van. I don't work on those vehicles. They'd be done at a garage because they're passenger vehicles. This is in my personal Dodge Caravan. Again, the blue, black, blacky blue, charcoal, dark blue, baby blue, navy blue, I don't know, it's up to you, caravan. So I'm gonna get set up here and I'm gonna bring you guys down with me and I'm gonna show you where it's leaking and uh, we're gonna fix it together. So guys, I am getting this upper line so if you're standing in front of the van on the left side right up top I did get this one slacking I know light's an issue here guys it's an issue for me too but yeah that bolt right there this part of the line this is the one that runs up from the bottom right up to the power steering pump. That one, that one I am, I did get a turn on it. Now I'm trying to get more. I'll get back to you when I get it slack. Okay, so guys, I got this one out. And what I had to do, I had to literally break the line. I broke it right here. Then I broke it up to the end. I just kept twisting it with my hand so I could get an 18 millimeter socket to fit there. But that one I have. Now I'm working at getting this piece out from here. And then I have to work on the upper one up there, which I already have loose. But again, I'm gonna have to break the line because it's the only way I can get them off. Okay guys, so I got the old line off. He's right here, as you can see. And my issue that I had, and if you guys live in the Rust Belt, well, you're gonna probably have the same issue. You see, I had to twist off the lines from the bolts right here because these pieces right here, pieces of line, are seized, 
seized inside so I couldn't twist it. So what I did was guys, and you probably, like I said, if you live in a rust belt and you got stuff like this that happens, I just twisted and twisted and twisted so that the line broke off. That way I could get my wrench on it so I could turn it and take it out. So I had to do it with the upper one that goes to the pump. And I also had to do the same thing with the one that goes up to the rack and pinion, which is this one right here. I had to twist this one off as well, okay? So just a little for your information, that's what I had to do. If you live in a rust belt, that's what you're going to have to do. And like I said, I had to twist lines off. Then I could get the socket. So for this one going into the rack and pinion, it's better to use a socket. The only way to use a socket is if you either cut this line or twist it off, fit your socket over, which is 18 millimeter, and then you can just take it out with a long extension. So I used a long extension on this one, and I got the bolt out. This one here, you have to use a wrench. No socket, you only gotta use a wrench. And you don't have much room there, so it's gonna take you a while until you can start twisting it with your fingers. <clears throat> also guys, when you buy a new line like this, it comes with a little package, and inside that little package are these little O-rings. You see them right there, it's the green one, right? And you put those on both ends. So you put it on this end right here, and you also put it on this end before you get up and start doing the installation, which I'm getting ready to go do now. That's what I'm getting ready to do. So. Hasta la vista to the old one and guys this was completely shot. It was leaking out through here It was leaking out through here And this side here it was soon gonna start leaking anyway, but you know Power steering fluid is expensive now. They're saying you can use uh, ATF fluid transmission fluid, but I don't like doing that. I like using what you're supposed to put in it, which is power steering fluid for Chrysler Which is very expensive. So this had to be fixed didn't want it to be leaking constantly So guys, I'm gonna get up and under now and start working on reinstalling it I'll try my best with the camera, but you don't have a lot of room. That's why I wasn't using the camera a lot It's it's you know one of those things where you just can't be using the camera very much but I'm going to get up under, show you as best I can. It's going to be a little bit easier now because it's a new line. So I'm going to try my best to bring you in and show you as much as possible. So guys, one thing that I'm doing, you see I got a lot of little zip ties here. One thing I noticed was, is on the original that came with the van, they had these little twist ties going all around this and if you notice this is a little loose and what i'm going to do is guys i'm just going to put some twist ties back around it it's what i guess they did at the manufacturer so i'm doing it right here and if i can get them on because believe me i don't ever want to have to change this again guys and if you're going to do this on your own, on your own project in your home, make sure you have the ability to jack your vehicle up nice and high because you need that room to get at this. Now, do you have to do what I'm doing here? Probably not, but I don't like this. Uh, I guess it's a heat protection, line protection uh, uh, material. But for me, it seems like it keeps it together in a better situation. And if you look at the original line, that's what they did too. So I'm just repeating that step. Because like I said, I don't want to ever have to be up there doing this job again because it's terrible. And I'm going to do this on both sides. Don't put it tight. I'm not doing it so that it's tight. I'm just doing it so that it keeps it there. That's all I'm doing, guys. Just doing it so that it keeps it there. 
and as I said, this is what they actually did with the line that is right from the dealer. And it's what I'm going to do here now. For the time it takes to do this, guys, nothing. And I'm just going to get my cutters and I'm just going to cut the ends off of the zip ties like that. And I'll do it. all the way around here see I think that's a better situation to have it in guys so let's hope that my lights are still on because I forgot to turn them off put some wrenches up here right there just get them out of the way <clears throat> if you look guys I have the jacks set up up the front. I have one jack stand there, another one here. I have more behind me. And the reason why is, is I don't want anything falling down here. So let me get my lights set up here, guys, and see if we can't get some illumination in this situation. So first, I'm going to get myself situated. Move this over here. Like I said, guys, if you're going to do this yourself, take your time. You're going to have to plan out for a few hours. Take your time. Try your best to get the lines, the old lines off in a good situation. I'm trying to manipulate my way up to where it has to go. It's a little bit of a manipulation to get the nut started into the rack, which I think I have the bolt start the nut started now. Sorry for the lack of light, guys. Now this one up here, guys, it's going to be uh, a little bit tricky because you don't have a lot of room, and to get this to be right. You have to do a little bit of manipulation and twisting. Okay, so I'll get back to you when I get that in position. It's going to require some manipulation, bending, prying, and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so guys, he's in place. I got him threaded. I am getting turns on him. It's not the easiest, but hey. Come on, I'm getting turns. That's all that's required here. And again, this is the line that goes up to the power steering pump. And so I'll get back to you when it's tight and you guys can see it from there. So guys, I have her running. Everything is good. I have zero leaks. And I melted my flashlight. <laughs> up there, I melted my flashlight, guys. Started up and forgot to move the flashlight. And up top, there's no leaks. Everything is good. The new line is installed all the way through all the way up and it's a job well done okay guys that's done listen if you take your time and you spray everything the night before then spray it again in the morning before you start with uh, penetrating oil, WD-40, whatever. It's not so bad. 
it is a bit awkward getting up to the line on the power steering pump, but uh, if you take your time, go about it right, it shouldn't be too bad. My circumstances, well, I live on the Rust Belt area, and well, everything for me is rusted out. Bolts, lines, everything. That's what happened to the line, rusted out. But it's done, it's finished, it's working good, there's no leaks, and I hope this helps you out. Not everything is impossible, not everything has to go to a garage. A lot, most things you can do on your own. Simple little garage like I have right here, guys. So thank you very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. Please leave me a like if you liked it, and subscribe if you feel like you wanna see more of my videos. And you can hit that bell up there and that'll notify you of upcoming videos I have. Feel free to purchase a sticker. You can find stickers anywhere. Just look around my YouTube channel and you can see that and where to go to buy it. I'd appreciate it very much and I'll see you on the next one.